Today, you guys, we're going to talk about ASO and uh, artificial intelligence, how we can use artificial intelligence tools that are available in the market uh, for ASO. What are some things that we can get done with ChatGPT for ASO? First of all, we can uh, use it for reviews, analyzing and uh, responding. Examples of how he's using it. We also can uh, generate it in a couple of, of keywords. Personally, I'm also using this uh, a lot through localization with different languages, especially within short sentences, because with long, they are not ideal. Nadir also even get a, like, uh, generated a list of keywords from a long description. He showed how mm. you can pull the long description and then ask chat gpt okay give me the keywords from this long description and it will provide the keywords of course the keyword brainstorming which it's not ideal but still if you have in mind some combination you can put there and the chat gpt will go with the combination of keywords of course with the subtitle yes with all metadata keyword field the titles as well you can uh, develop several versions of subtitles from the keywords that you have actually or just from the main, like sense of the app, for instance, the fitness app, give me some example of subtitle or the meditation or et cetera, et cetera. Right. Of course, you, you can also respond the, to the review. One of my favorite ones that I'm finding on this article that I will link below is a list of two columns, one for the keyword and one for its search volume in the US App Store. Based on this list, could you provide three app store subtitles of maximum 30 characters containing the best keywords? And also you can uh, use it as a support team if you want to uh, develop the response from the reviews. And uh, then you can pull the these reviews, even the negative mm -hmm. or positive, then ask ChatGPT, okay, what kind of response can we get? And he it, it will give provide uh, provide you some generic responses. Another uh, point out is you can even generate the code to monitor a list of app pages on Google Play uh, to be or or App Pay to be automatically not notified whenever there will there will be some changes in metadata or screenshots. So you can even ask ChatGPT to develop the codes. Also, I'm using it for developing the even long description for English version because it's really good. Sometimes it's uh, really uh, very well very well structured. So I, I like this uh, tool a lot in terms of like metadata. Uh, yeah, and I like that it's relatively free. So you can move forward and, and don't pay for, for, for stuff. Yes, because other tools that uh, we're going to show, they are not uh, free so far. The, you can get uh, some free trials but still they are not 100% free, which is uh, the downside of uh, other tools. Yes. What's your favorite way of doing the long description prompt? Like what is the prompt that you like to use? It depends. It depends on the app. Uh, like, uh, hey, I'm, I'm doing like, hey, can you give me the several versions of long description for video books app or, and then I, I'm uh, dr drilling the down the, this stuff. Then from these several long descriptions, I'm making one, one mine. You know, one of the things we just recently did, George, was we had ChatGPT come up with a different app name for one of our clients. We wanted this particular keyword and we're like, hey, ChatGPT, come up with 10 different app names that are under 30 characters with the word blank in there and it came up with it and we're leveraging it in our ASO and it's working pretty well because it was shifting from like word games as an example to a different keyword and now we're seeing pretty good success with that keyword as well and he even had ChatGPT and Midjourney create the icon for the app as well yeah man with with specific keywords it even works better so if yeah. you put okay within these keywords i want to develop some metadata it works perfectly actually especially for english speaking country, countries oh. for for non english it has still some issues but a minor one but still i think they will improve with, with this yeah. direction as well from an ASO standpoint, is there anything new that you're really focusing on, whether it has anything to do with AI? For, across all apps and games that I'm working, I'm pushing really creatives because they are working very well. I think the quick win, you have to look through the creatives and assets, especially for Icon, if your branding team allow you to do this mm -hmm. and of course other stuff. So of course, maybe maybe to pop up, uh, you can develop the horizontal app preview video, even if you have a vertical one, it also helps. So creatives, you're saying like start with the app icon and then maybe Correct. the screenshots and then Correct. a horizontal video. 
Yes, horizontal well. video as well. And maybe maybe the banner as well, because most of the apps, they still don't have a banner. Rudy has a question. Evening, folks. How about Bard from Google? Any comparisons with ChatGPT? The only tool that I um, compare to today with ChatGPT is Jasper. You can do a browser extension, so you can implement it. The, it has also the API. You can implement it uh, for your tools, uh, especially. And there are, you made a video, uh, Steve, how you can use it. It's one, one minute video. They explain how to, how you can use it. So uh, not only through API, but also there is a browser extension. You install this extension. And for, for instance, if you have this Google, uh, Google sheet or Google docs or whatever, you get everything, the same stuff that the chat GPT provides, but uh, in Google directly. In, in my opinion, so chat GPT is a bit better. Here you can do it directly, you know, for tools that are you working, you can develop them the answers you know already and not to, to go to the chat gpt as a separate and ask and copy past the stuff also they have a really good uh, localization tool so in one click uh, if mm. you get this uh, extension you can get a local localized version with within 22 or 26 languages what we like to do with localization is you know use a tool like chat gpt or jasper to get the translation and then have a real person a native speaker kind of like edit it I'm doing the same, man. Okay. I'm, I'm using ChatGPT first uh, and then putting in one Excel sheet or whatever, or like Google sheet, and then ask guys, if I have someone, hey, can you just check if it's if it's okay or not? And that's how, how I'm working in most in most cases. Even the for, for short description, even you can, you can even avoid the checking to others because for short stuff, for short sentences, it works perfectly. Do you have a favorite resource to use to try to find these editors, native speaking editors? There is a uh, one tool named Translate AIO. Okay. They are the real translations, translators there, interpreters there. But still, sometimes the I found out that sometimes the quality good. was uh, was not as good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, before all this AI stuff came out, we used to use a site called Gengo. Mm -hmm. They would do the automatic translation, but I don't know if they have just editors. But yeah, this is what we used before ChatGPT. Oh, Kasha says, can I expect some prompts for short description, long description, et cetera, that you are using for your apps? First of all, I'm getting the keywords done and then I'm using these mm -hmm. keywords to, to put in a short and long, long description. If we are talking about long description, it's better at the, at the beginning uh, mention about the amount of downloads if you have really good amount of downloads or some awards that your app or games uh, recently get from international stuff to get uh, people's attention on the, on your app and trust yes from from this source yes and mm -hmm. then of course some some details about your app with a very very short very short um, explanation what is about and then just the contact and links to social media is also work to uh, people want to also to check because people try trust still for social media so they are checking the that as well but of course and for short description yes i'm mostly using the keywords and from the keywords combination i'm putting in chat gpt say hey chat gpt from this keywords combination can you do a, like five versions of short description you know and then i will uh, i'm choosing the proper versions for me i just said write a description under 81 characters that includes the words breathing exercises meditation and calm and you can see chat gpt came up with some stuff too. And the way I'm really using chat GPT these days is obviously for the YouTube stuff, but the, the app name, like I, we have the main keyword that we want to target, but I also believe that brand is important. And so chat GPT came up with a brand name that I, I went after and I was like, Oh, I'm going to use this. This is great. So it's really great. I did it for my app and I did it for a client's app as well. Is there any problem by copy and pasting the short and long description, which is generated by chat GPT? Because I listened that Google identified these as generated by AI tools, so they not really, that. No, not really. Like uh, Google sucks to to identify anything uh, based on my experience, especially with uh, artificial intelligence. So I mean, based on my experience, I didn't face any issues with that so far. Yes, of course, if you put some dumb stuff, uh, you might get in a in an issue. Yes, that's why you shall not trust one hundred percent for any AI tool, and that's why you you need a human who gonna check the final version. You know, because for uh, in some cases they are not correct. 100% and still they need a human to to moving forward with the stuff yes